Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I've got a model that looks absolutely fascinating and it's produced by Walthers. <laughs> A few years ago, Hattons produced one of these. This is known as the Bealhack Snowplow, and as you can see, it's an absolutely insane looking model. But recently, I found a model that cranks the insane levels up to about 5 million, and that is this. This is called a Jordan Spreader, which may sound like the name of an old farmer from Lancashire, but it's actually a collective name given to these devices called spreaders. And these were created by a company that was founded by a guy called Oswald Jordan. So that kind of explains the name. And these devices, yes, they were used to plow snow, as you might guess, but they also had so many other uses as well. They would do landscaping, they would clear greenery and shrubs, and they would even be used to shape the ballast profile on track. Absolutely fascinating devices. This, as you can see, is produced by Walthers. Not tried an awful lot from Walthers so far, but I did look at a loco from them a few weeks ago, and it was absolutely awesome. It was very good value, and the level of detail and the features on that loco were awesome. And I'm certainly hoping the same is going to be true of this. The value for money certainly seems to be good from the offset. So the ROP for this is $84.99 which works out at about £69. For what looks like a relatively complex model, I would say that's a pretty nice price. But I got this for even less. It was on special at Train World, as you can see, for $74.99, which is more like £60. Now, for such a large piece of kit, and this is large, look at it, compared with the Bealhack, it's an absolute beast of a snowplow slash spreader doesn't seem too bad at all, but I've not had this out of the box yet. I've waited until this video to experience it for the first time. So join me and let's see what this is like. So there was actually quite a bit of choice when it came to picking which spreader I was going to buy. So if you are interested in getting one, check them out on Train World. There's a lot to choose from from Walther's. However, when I saw that there was one with a gigantic, terrifying face complete with sharp, gnashing teeth on it, I thought, yeah, that's probably the one I'm going to go for. And yeah, it's a lot larger than I expected it to be. Anyway, let me show you the end of the box. So you can see the version I've got. It's a Jordan spreader, maintenance of the weight, black. It's 920-110116 and it has factory installed grab irons. I don't know why they decided to mention that on the box. Also turned metal wheel sets and Protomax metal knuckle couplers. So it does sound like it's quite a quality model. There's nothing really to see on the rest of the box. This is just the standard stuff about Walthers, I think, who are good based on that other loco I looked at. So really eager to try another model from them. So let's pull it out and let's have a look at this Jordan spreader. I guess I'll have to nickname this one Jordan, since he's obviously a character with his face. Okay, right, what does this say? Caution, side wings are delicate, open and position carefully. Ah, that's kind of given away one of the features that I was hoping this would have, and that would be the opening wings. We'll figure that out later on. Okay, well, we do have some instructions here, so let's start. So here you've got a history on the Jordan spreader. If you want to pause and read that, feel free to. It's quite nice that they've included that. You've got a parts list. Look at this. Quite a lot of different bits going on to this. Certainly seems quite impressive for what I paid for it. And then does this open up? Oh yeah, look at that. So you've got a gigantic A3 exploded diagram. Now this is quality, isn't it? This is cool. A proper exploded diagram that you can really get your teeth into. Yeah, that's awesome. And then what have we got on the back? Even more. Look at this. It says sub-assemblies. It looks like maybe the wings or something. Yeah, it looks like an absolutely awesome product. And what have we got here? Uh, okay. So for kit shortages or defective parts. All right. Oh, it's just warranty. Okay, fair enough. Right, shall we have a look at this then? Is there any accessories? No, don't think so. So let's pull this out and let's take a look. What an insane looking product. All right. Right, I'm gonna have to be careful with this. Oh gosh, yeah, very careful. Got some bits of plastic on the bogies. And uh, yeah, 
here it is. And the first thing to say is that, yeah, this is extremely fragile. And it seems as though there is a lot of moving parts on this thing to an insane degree. So we've got these little wings here, which are sprung. I don't know if you can keep those in the outward position. Uh, we've got this wing, oh my word, which opens up, look at all the hydraulics, all those hydraulic cylinders to open and close the wings. Yeah, it's insanely complex, isn't it? Um, not particularly well built. I've noticed there are some parts of it coming apart already, uh, which I'll, well, I won't fix it. I'll sort of show it to you in close up in just a second before I do. But yeah, this is really one that you've got to watch. <laughs> you've got to really think about every single time you place your hand on the model and make sure that you're not going to damage it because it really does seem to be that fragile. But quite impressive, nevertheless. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, really quite something different. So let's have a little bit of background on the Jordan spreaders, and then we'll take a much closer look at this model and some of its details. All right, wish me luck. The Jordan spreader was designed by Oswald F. Jordan originally, who was a Canadian who formed his own company in 1898 in order to construct his spreaders. A key feature of these spreaders was the wings that could open up either side of the vehicle, and these would be operated either by compressed air or by hydraulics. And this allowed the device to operate beyond the confines of the narrow track bed. These spreaders had multiple uses, as I say. They were primarily to spread and shape the ballast profile along newly laid track, and obviously the plows and the wings could be used to shape the ballast into that perfect uniform shape although they were also used to plough snow in the winter time and even to clear greenery from the side of the track to improve clearance for the trains. Over 1,400 of these multi-purpose adjustable spreaders were built in total and many can still be seen today. So there it is, up close and personal for you, the Jordan spreader from Wolfers. And I'm sure you can tell that this is an absolutely amazing model in its level of detail and complexity. Very, very impressive. And also the way that the wings are fully manoeuvrable, also absolutely amazing. But as we know, having seen quite a few complex models on this channel in the past, the more complex a model is, the more likely it is to suffer from build quality issues. And unfortunately, there are a number of build quality problems with this. Some of them I noticed immediately. One of them is that there has been too much glue used to assemble this in many areas. Yeah, there is visible glue holding quite a few parts together, which does kind of spoil the illusion a little bit. Having said that, despite the copious amounts of glue used in areas, the model is still coming apart. The main plow on the front, for instance, yeah, this is just completely loose and needs gluing back together. And I felt this moving under my fingers immediately, which is why I said, oh, this is a fragile model. That's quite easily fixed, I suppose, and I will do that now that I've filmed these close-ups. Also, when I was filming my initial unboxing, when I was just opening up one of these wings, one of these cylinders collapsed entirely on me and I had to try and glue the thing back together and the design here is not great. These cylinders have a piston running inside them and they are made up of two moulded pieces of plastic. You can see the join between them and these two pieces just came apart so that the entire cylinder just dropped off this hinge and I had to glue the two halves of it back together and then clamp it shut while the glue set. So this side is now correctly together on the other side, you can see that the same thing is going to happen over there at some point as well. The two halves of that cylinder are coming apart. So I don't know if it's just a design thing or whether it just wasn't assembled that well in the factory, but there are a lot of moving parts literally on this and it's not really staying together too well. But anyway, let's take a look at the level of detail. Let's look at the plow first of all, because it is an impressive thing. And when you consider this is HO scale, I mean, the height of this plow must be, what, two or three, maybe four times the height of a person. It's an absolutely terrifying piece of kit, isn't it? Uh, made even more so by the face on this, which I absolutely love. But even underneath the plow, or rather behind the plow, look, you've got steps, you've got cylinders, you've got a massive amount of detail. 
absolutely astonishing. And the cab is surrounded by detail as well. You've got these painted horns and some lights on it. I'm not sure whether these are going to be working lights, but they certainly do have lenses on them. You've got the little chimney, the door with the glazing on it, the very detailed steps leading up to the cab. And then, of course, you've got the wooden planking effect behind it with this pressure tank. I suppose that could be a hydraulic tank as well. I'm not sure if this is a, an air pressure powered one or a hydraulic one. It could be pneumatic, couldn't it, with all these tanks and such. And if I flip it upside down, you can see we've even got masses of underframe detail. Although this is let down a little bit because you've got this bar weight which is unpainted, so it really stands out and doesn't look realistic. So in order to take in the level of detail on the underside, you also have to see this large unpainted weight, which kind of renders it a little bit useless, doesn't it? Anyway, as promised, we do have these separately fitted grab irons, which do seem to be separately painted as well, which is cool. You've got some decent bogey detail on the bogey you can see. Yeah, that looks good. And as promised, we've also got nice metal wheels. The couplings are metal, as promised, but uh, yeah, they're not great either. They're not properly sprung, so they don't always return to the center. And I say they because there's one on the front as well, and that does the same. It just sort of lolls side to side. Doesn't spring back as it's supposed to. So again, automated couplings, good luck. You're gonna have to center those manually before they will couple. Anyway, let's have another close look at the wing mechanism. So let's open very carefully with this one of these wings, as you can see, that opens up and there's sort of one, two, three, four cylinders that all move with the motion of that. It's absolutely amazing. And then you can sort of lower this blade, which comes down to meet the track. Now, obviously you're not gonna be able to model any sort of plowing or shifting or moving of ballast, because these will just totally get destroyed immediately. So you're certainly not gonna wanna run this in its open state. But um, as a little bit of a display piece as something that's impressive to look at, it certainly is. It really, really is very impressive, but also very fragile. By no means is this a toy, and you really do have to watch it when you open and close these wings. Uh, but no, overall, the level of detail is obviously fantastic. The build quality leaves a lot to be desired. It is mainly plastic. Um, that metal weight is really the only major metal component I've seen. Most of the stuff on the outside is just made of plastic. Fair enough, I suppose, for the price. But uh, yeah, it's far from a sturdy model, I would say. Anyway, let's get it onto the track. I have no idea what to expect in terms of performance, but we'll figure out how free rolling it is. We will test the couplings and we'll see if it stays on the track. It's quite a complex vehicle, so it will be interesting to see if it does. So the Jordan spreader is down onto the track and ready for its first test. I've glued it back together as best I can. The, um, the actual plow on the front now is sort of glued back together, so it looks okay, I think. In terms of weight, like I say, it is quite plasticky and light. 79 grams, in fact, is all it weighs, which is quite surprising because the Hatton's Beelhack snowplow, which is obviously a much smaller vehicle, is considerably heavier because it's largely die-cast. So that was 101 grams, about 20 grams heavier than the Jordan Spreader. So like I say, quite light, cheaply made, quite plasticky. Anyway, before I try a coupling, I wanted to do the free rolling test. Not too critical really, because obviously you're never gonna be hauling a massive long train of these, but the test should show what sort of quality we're dealing with when it comes to the wheels and the bogies. And as you can see, absolutely tremendous. It got an incredibly long way. A lot of the rolling stock I've tried recently hasn't done too well on this test, so it is great to see some rolling stock that actually does roll very freely. Anyway, I've got another Walther's product to push this plow today, or the spreader, I guess. This is the GP9, which was very cheap and cheerful, great loco. I thought, why not use that today? So let's attempt a coupling, let's see if it works. Honestly, I doubt it's gonna couple because like I say, the couplings don't sort of center themselves, but we'll try it. You have to give these things a try. So let's go, not too slowly, let's give it a fair chance. Yeah. No, I mean, obviously not. So let's try again. <laughs> In fact, the plow's so free rolling, it's just kind of rolled away. Let's try again. Let's see if we can push the couplings out a little bit. Is the loco one all right? Let's try again. Yeah, you see, it 
now, because the plough is so light, it's pushing it away rather than sort of opening up the knuckle and coupling. Let's try keep it still. Try a little bit faster, see if we can just sort of knock them together. No, still didn't work. So the coupling's combined with the light weight, not good at all. Let me hold it still then. Got to resort to this. There. Now it's worked. So as predicted, yeah, not good couplings. And funnily enough, you know, they've gone to the trouble of making the metal and everything. Well, actually, your cheap Backman Easy ones actually work better than these. So yeah, that's disappointing. But once coupled, seems to be okay. So, shall we take it for a spin? Yeah, I think so. Let's send it round the track then, forwards direction, and uh, let's see how it performs, hopefully without any derailing. Here we go, just look at this thing. Yeah, it's insane, isn't it? It's a really, really odd looking thing, but also a cool thing as well. And the fact that it has all these sort of operating features is absolutely amazing. And it does seem to be fine, honestly, around the curves. It seems to be staying on, it seems to be stable. So the couplings are rubbish, it is lightweight, but the bogies and the wheels are good quality, very free rolling, and it also seems to be perfectly stable. Obviously, like I say, I'm not even going to try opening up the wings and running it because it's just definitely going to hit things, isn't it? Especially on my layout of all. So they are very much just decorative. I suppose the plough on the front, maybe you could use that to shift some snow or ballast or something. But again, bear in mind, it's a very fragile piece and it's going to get scratched up or even broken off if you do anything like that. So, yeah, it's not a practical device. And of course, it's so light that if you start trying to plough anything with it, it's just going to come off the track, isn't it? But in terms of just the way it looks as a decorative thing, it is fantastic. And what a strange prototype as well. I love models of this sort of thing. And it is a great model in that sense. You know, it's a little bit of a novelty. And I think they know that. They've designed it with all these action features and such. And they've made it super cool. So for the money, yeah, it's absolutely fine. Quality, not amazing. It doesn't have working lights either. I noticed those lights aren't working. Um, but that's fair enough. You know, it wasn't that expensive, to be honest. So I think it's fair enough. Yeah, it's a good bit of fun, isn't it? I'm quite impressed with this. Let's have some ratings then on the very impressive Jordan Spreader from Wolfers. And as you can see, it's kind of a mixed review here. The level of detail for me would be a four star. Obviously, there's lots of impressive stuff on this model. The plow, the moving wings, all of the hydraulic or compressed air cylinders, absolutely incredible. There's also a lot of underframe detail and such that you wouldn't even see unless you were looking closely at the model. Very impressive, but you've got that underframe which lets it down a little bit. I don't know why they didn't paint that big metal weight in there because it doesn't look particularly realistic like this. Also, the lights are just dummies. The lights don't work. Some models obviously have lights. This one didn't. So I've knocked it down by just one star because these things are only minor. The performance, similarly, once it's coupled up and running, it's fantastic. It's very, very smooth, stable on the track, very free rolling as well. It's just the couplings. They're no good at all. They don't center themselves, so you can't really easily couple. Also, the plow is so light that rather than coupling together, the loco invariably just pushes the plow away, <laughs> which means you can't really automatically couple up to it. It could have done with being a little bit heavier and the springing of the couplings needs to be a little bit stronger so that they return to the center. So I've knocked it down a little bit for that. The quality similarly is not great on this. Obviously it's very plasticky, not a lot of metal to it. It mainly is just that weight embedded in the body that gives it the weight. You've got visible glue on several of the parts and despite the amount of glue used, several of the parts are falling to pieces as well. I've had to glue the plow back together and the cylinders that actuate the wings also needed gluing back together. So quality issues, not great on this, unfortunately. It's also a very, very fragile model. You can't mess around with this thing. You've got to be very, very careful in the way you handle it. And even if you are, as I was, you're probably still gonna get some breakages depending on how it's been assembled. So a word of warning there. 
Value for money though, I really do think the price is good on this. $84.99, £69, or around £60 is what I paid at Train World. Yeah, it's quite a lot of money for a piece of rolling stock, but it is an extremely complex piece of rolling stock, and it's one that does work quite well once everything is sorted out. So I think it is a five star on value. I've been quite harsh elsewhere on this model, so maybe it's a little generous to give it five given some of the issues, but I really do feel quite pleased with this for what I paid. Overall then, that is 7.53 out of 10, or a grade of C. I think if the quality was a little bit better, I'd be able to give this a much higher score. But into the logbook it goes, and as you can see, it's not done too badly at all. It is second place above the Athern Hoppers and below the Rapido Ferry Van. Yeah, it's one of the most complex pieces of rolling stock I have ever reviewed. It's quite impressive because of that. Well folks, that will just about do it for this review. I hope you enjoyed that and what an incredible product this is. Not perfect by any means, the quality could have been better, uh, but you know the level of detail and basically the general premise of the product I think is absolutely awesome. And uh, it's definitely the sort of thing that I just love to collect. It's just so unusual, it's going to grab people's attention. So if that's the sort of thing you're looking to do, then this is the perfect model for you. But that's all I have to say on it for now. Let me know what do you think of this. Is this something you'd like to own? Would you get one? Uh, which one would you buy? If so, is this the one you'd go for? I don't know. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again very, very soon for another review. All right, cheers, folks. Take care.